to get coaches to collaborate and to share and to be open and to build relationships with each other. Um, we, well, sometimes we're selfish and there's a lot of selfish coaches out there and, you know, already I would guess that you guys being 31, 32 coaches from different schools in different countries, being together for five weeks, have probably shared quite a lot. Would that be fair? Yes. And you've learned from each other, even though you're from different sports, different countries, different cultures, different languages. Now, sometimes it's easier to share with those kind of people <coughs> who are very different from us, who aren't... Mm -hmm. He'll he live my language, so you know... <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> sometimes it's easier to be sharing and be more open with people who we're not competing with, or we're not seen to be competing with. And sometimes more difficult if we think, I think your point, Karina, was how do we share with people and we might all be competing for the same athletes. Now, I, I'm going to start, but I, I guess if we, can, if we take the bigger picture again about where do we need to be as a sport, as a country, as a federation, getting those people involved together in helping move the whole thing forward, maybe helps separate out some of the differences and gets people to say, actually, we're not actually competing. Your role is quite different to mine, albeit we're working with similar players, but actually we're looking to do different things. So it might be helping people to realise they're all contributing to a bigger, somehow getting people above themselves, I think, or beyond themselves. I, I agree, but my question is, do you have any strategy used to get that? Together? Because I think every coach knows that. Yeah. And they're aware of it. Mm. But it's just, sometimes it takes longer than others. It absolutely takes longer, but you have to get them in the same room, I think. And I think for me, the strategy I adopt is getting people to, to come in and be honest and open and to at least get to the point of sharing the things they're happy to share and to recognise that they're all going to contribute to something that is going to help all of them move their athletes to, to greater things. Um, and, and it can take minutes and it can take years. So it's, it's all of that building relationship stuff that you might need to do to lead that to get people to buy into something that they want to work to together, even if it's only a small part initially of what you really want to do. And you buy in their trust that actually we can share and we're not competing with each other and we can still operate our own clubs. However, this bit we can do together and they see that bit works. Very popular, thank you. <laughs> then, then we can move on from there. Um, yeah. Uh, we've been in the American University, but the focus was competing to each other. Uh, they, uh, they are fixing one day and if all the coaches come in, yes. everybody is sharing one, two practice. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've been there and all the coaches came, they've been sharing information together. What fantastic that you say mm. that we can put in one yes. room. So you so might share a bit. Can, uh, share, uh, yeah. Initially share enough that people are happy to share. We can talk, we can talk some more, because I think it's a good question. Um, okay. All right, I, I, I just want to shift us on now. Again, we're beginning to talk about being coach developers and not only coaches. No, obviously we're making executive decisions. No, no, I'm not. I'm just doing... <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, we're just having a private conversation here. Um, sometimes you'll hear yourself talk, and we talk a lot about, you guys wear many different hats, metaphorically. So already you've told us you coach children, you Especially. coach adults, you coach development, you coach performance. Sometimes what other hats do you wear in your life? Administrator. So manager, administrator, musician, musician, teacher, parent, responsibility, husband, there you go, teacher. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Advisor, counselor, We have money maker. If you want. We have lots of hats that we wear. Lots of the time you wear this one. Gosh. You wear the coach's hat, the red hat. Even though underneath that, there might be many shades of red because you're different kinds of coaches at various different times. But largely, you're here, you're here as coaches. Now, when we start thinking about helping coaches to get better, helping other coaches to improve, we have to add another hat to our collection of hats. So we become the tutor or the coach developer. 
can never get my hair back. So, <laughs> so we, have to, we have to take on another hat, which means that we take a step back and we're saying, right, how do I help these coaches get better? And in order to be the tutor, sometimes I have to let go of my coaches' hat a bit. Because what is the temptation as soon as we start working with coaches? What hat do we tend to wear? Hmm? You become one of them. Ah, we put this one back on quite a lot. And we do it's too big this one. And we end up we end up being the coach again. Now if I'm the coach and I've got other coaches with me, what am I hoping that'll happen then? If I still act as the coach all the time, how am I hoping that they'll learn? A lot of By example. By, by example, so pretty much I'm saying if, I, if I'm the coach and you're here watching me be the coach, you'll learn about how to be a better coach by watching me, because I must be quite good, and it would be helpful for you to watch me being quite good, and therefore, you know, if you just want to stick around me long enough, and you'll become a better coach. Yes. <laughs> yes and sometimes that works, and sometimes for all of us, we're probably saying our journeys of being a coach, we've learned by being around some good coaches. However, we need to speed up the learning of our people who are going to come on courses or, or clinics or whatever. And to do that, we, if we're going to be the ones doing it, we have to become the tutor a bit more. We have to think about how do adults learn. Because these are not athletes with us anymore. These are coaches who we want to help get better. And they're pretty much going to be a little bit older. So, I want you to have a think. And you can talk about this just in, your, in, in the first person sitting next to you. Where's me to be gone? I want you to think about... A situation where you've had to learn something new. Anyone remember being taught how to drive? <laughs> Learning how to drive? Anyone remember that? No. You have learned how to drive. <laughs> yes. Okay. I remember my dad taught. Well, my dad started teaching me for a while till he got really scared, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then had proper lessons. And eventually, on the fifth occasion, I passed my test. <laughs> so I won't offer anybody a lift, especially on the wrong side of the road over here. Um, but there have been, you know, learning to drive is a situation for me. I want you to think about situa a situation where you've been taught, two situations where you've learned. And it could be a sporting situation, it could be a musical situation, it could be a language, it could be... You could go right back one or two years to when you were at school. Um, but think about when you've learned a new skill. It can be in your sport, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. Uh, and I want you to think about one that was successful for you and that you learned the skill and one that wasn't successful for you, was less successful for you. Ooh. And you see, look, there you go, you've got one straight away, haven't you? Often, often the ones where it hasn't been very successful are the ones that we find in our heads quite quickly because they stick with us. So I want you to think, two examples, and you can have a think in your head and you can share it just with the person next to you. A time when you learned a new skill that was successful and it worked for you, and another time when there was something that was less successful, it wasn't as comfortable, you didn't enjoy it, and you may not have achieved very much out of it. Um, and work out why was it that one worked and one didn't? What was it about that learning situation that worked for you? Why did it work and why did the other one not? Alright, so you've got see you've got loads in your head already, haven't you? So you might just open the floor to over there. I share a lot. Okay, so just have a have a think and just have a turn to the person next to you if you want to share. Just, can we come up with a couple of examples? What was a learning experience that was good for you? Answer. No, oh, your turn. <laughs> Answer. <laughs> Uh, what was a learning experience that was good for you? One where someone taught you something and it all went well. For uh, for rowing, rowing, yeah. Rowing. If you uh, if you're talking about the technique of the athlete, uh, how to how, how to to apply this. This technique by the video or mm -hmm. or uh, uh, see the the best uh, 